RPG games are some of my favorite games to play. And when you take NFTs and include them in the gameplay, it kicks it up 100%. I'm going to show you my top five play to earn RPGs that incorporate NFTs that you have to check out if you love earning crypto by playing video games. Are you ready? Well, hey there, crypto friends. Thanks again for joining me. So we're going to be talking today about my top five RPG based NFT games that uh, I've really enjoyed so far. Some of these games are games you can already play right now. And some of them are games that are coming up here very soon. So you want to get in on the ground floor of these games be before they blow up. So we're going to be talking about these RPG games because I think the inclusion of NFTs and RPGs uh, is definitely one of the best use cases for in-game uh, applications of NFTs, period. Now these games all include some sort of play to earn mechanic, a way that you can play the game and actually earn money by either collecting NFT items and selling them on the marketplace or earning some sort of in-game currency that you could then convert uh, to uh, real world value like USD or other cryptocurrencies. So we're going to review all those top five games. But before we get into that, if you love games, NFTs and earning money in crypto, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and smash that like button if you want to continue to maximize your gaming profits with me. All right, so let's go take a look at the very first game that uh, is on my list today. This is a game that I have been playing for a very long time, and it has come a long way. It is one of the original uh, NFT RPGs out there, and it is Lost Relics. All right, here we are at the Lost Relics website, so you get a little idea about this game and look and feel. Uh, this is a game that is very, mm, I, I would say, Diablo style. Uh, in a lot of different ways, it is a uh, procedurally generated dungeon crawler. And what I mean by procedurally generated is I mean that all the dungeons you go into, they are not set dungeons. They are, they are generated as you go into them every single time. So the components mix around. You're never playing the same dungeon ever uh, again, which I think is really interesting and unique aspect of this game. And so you're going into the game and uh, you can either do quests and earn NFT items that way, or you can go into these dungeons and earn items that way. And uh, there's some pretty unique aspects around this. So you can only take so many items out with you, and uh, some of them can be NFT items. Now, uh, playing this game for a very long time, uh, they've gone through a name change, and uh, they do have a very small team, a uh, single developer working on this game. This is a game that is on the engine platform. So all the NFTs are engine-based NFTs. Uh, and uh, they have uh, engine has recently launched their jump net solution. So the transactions are getting to a point where they're not super bad, even though they're on Ethereum. Uh, Lost Relics is kind of catching up with the jump net solution there. But if you go look at some of these NFTs that people have just found by questing in the game, uh, they go from anywhere from like a dollar up to some of you know for the lowest ones up to a hundred or even a thousand dollars for some of the rarest NFTs in this game. And so you'll find uh, that a lot of these NFTs are weapons, but there are also ingredients and things that you might need for particular quests or special items and equipment. Uh, there's also skins the, that you can have for your character too. So all these items can be earned in game and then sold on the marketplace for pretty good profits. And so if you're a big fan of, you know, dungeon crawlers, hack and slash type of games, this is definitely one of those RPGs, action RPGs to be able to check out. Now, one of the cool things that we've been waiting for for quite some time is multiplayer and multiplayer is coming soon. Right now, it's just a solo game. You're going into these dungeons by yourself, but uh, soon there will be a multiplayer function for Lost Relics. And I think that will really take it to the next level. And so you can see a little bit about the game here. It uh, talks a little bit about, you know, what it looks like. But essentially, you're, you're going around and you're looking for chess or these Lost Relics as you're playing. And uh, they've added a ton of great features, uh, a town that you can go around and talk to NPCs and, uh, you know, a tavern with with all different quest givers. And then you're, there's an in-game marketplace where you can actually buy and sell these items in game, uh, which is really cool. And there's an in, a marketplace for it in, in, in the actual game. So I really enjoy that, too. 
So you have this kind of ever-evolving world, and you do have to have like a, a couple of other, there's like in-game uh, gold and stuff like that that you earn, as well as uh, you can find these things called adventure stones, which you need for questing the dungeons. And they always do a lot of really cool, fun events here. I've, I've uh, participated in quite a few events in Lost Relics, and uh, one of them was one of the very first multi-verse uh, quests uh, that you had to complete here in Lost Relics too. So a really fun game that incorporates a bunch of uh, RPG elements and has more of that kind of hack and slash Diablo feel to it. So definitely something worth checking out. So hopefully you guys like uh, Lost Relics. Let's go take a look at my second pick on this list and it is a game called Nine Lives Arena. This is a pretty fun game that is a PvP focused game and uh, it takes you to, uh, you know, essentially this, this uh, you know, PvP island where you're leveling up your your uh, your character and uh, it is focused on one versus one combat. So as you can see here, kind of in the background, uh, the graphics are actually really well done. Uh, the gameplay is solid. Uh, it has a little bit of a Dark Souls kind of feel to the gameplay, so it's very, uh, um, it is very, uh, uh, you know, purposeful, right? It's a purposeful type of combat. You're not just button mashing around trying to mash on people. You really have to uh, think out your combat here. And uh, the cool thing about it is it's true. You have only nine lives. So this character that you're building up, uh, you know, if you're if you're fighting him in a non-training scenario, uh, after he dies nine times, uh, you're putting you're literally putting your life on the line. Uh, he is then dead. Now you don't lose uh, all of your items and things like that, but you do lose, uh, you know, your, the character in general. And there actually are ways to kind of bring him back as a spirit uh, in a different way. Uh, uh, you know, called it like an immortal. There's, so there's a bunch of different really cool ways to be able to kind of bring this character back. But he is immortalized at, at a certain point after this. So if you really love PvP type of RPGs, this is the way to go. Now, when it comes to the RPG elements. Uh, they, you, they, you know, they do have a whole, a full crafting system. So crafting all the weapons and armor in this game is one of the play to earn elements. And right now the play to earn elements in this game is much as it is playable right now, it is in kind of a closed alpha state. Uh, the play to earn element is that you have these blueprints that you can, that you can own, and then you are the exclusive person that can produce that item. And so you can then, you know, get these blueprints, build them in game and then sell them on the marketplace, uh, to be able to make profit. And so this game is uh, in this early stages of development, but I've played a ton of Nine Lives as well, and it is polished enough to be able to have a lot of fun. Now, some of these are other RPG elements is you're collecting resources as well uh, for your crafting and leveling up your character for getting things like rings or getting unlocking additional features uh, and skills, right? Uh, and one of the really sweet elements is they have a really cute character in the game called the Oogie. And so the Oogie itself is, um, He's like your little offline helper. And so you can see him here. And what Ugi does is that you feed him fish and keep him fed and he'll just continue to gather resources and do things for you. Uh, he, he can craft things. He can, uh, um, you know, f he can he can get uh, different items for you. And, uh, you know, generally he's he's kind of your worker that actually works while the game is off. So you could literally feed him for a couple of hours, turn the game off, come back, and he will have done a bunch of things like collecting resources and, and whatnot uh, for you to be able to, uh, you know, do your crafting. Uh, and uh, level up your character. So you can see these Oogies are actually super cute. Uh, they have a, their NFT uh, characters just like the, the different items are, like weapons and armor. So you can trade these back and forth on marketplaces. And uh, there's tons of different possibilities and combinations. They have different rarities and, and scarcities. And uh, I can't stress how cool the Oogies themselves really are in this game. Uh, I have a lot of fun uh, with them and kind of, you know, uh, the fact that they, they allow you kind of play offline in, in a different way, right? So uh, with the, the other elements too, there's also fishing. So they have these uh, fishing, uh, um, you know, uh, not tournaments, but uh, you know, fishing leaderboard where you know you catch these big fish and you essentially can feed those fish to your ogi, and that's how you kind of keep him going, right? Which is a lot of fun. And uh, you know, so the the focus really here is on on uh, the PvP elements of it, but the RPG elements are are more and more every time they put a new update. And so this game is not free to play. Uh, it is $40 to get started, and so you do need like a Founders Pack to get started on this game. Uh, but it is a, a lot of fun. And when you look at the items that you can actually uh, you know, craft in game and then sell in the store, uh, the items are going for $100 plus. So these things are, are not cheap items, and uh, if you get a hold of some of these blueprints, you can be the exclusive creator and crafter of these things and kind of corner the market. 
and definitely play and earn that. So they're, they're adding a little bit more to the play and earn elements and definitely adding more RPG elements every time they do a new release. So that's why it was uh, become one of my you know favorite kind of RPG PVP focused type of games. So I hope you guys like the uh, Nine Lives Arena. Let's take a look at the next game, uh, which is actually called, uh, this, this one's called uh, The Six Dragons. And so The Six Dragons is uh, a really interesting game that is like an open world RPG. So here we are with the Six Dragons, and um, you know, in contrast to the others, this is a this is very much a sandbox RPG. So when you talk about a very traditional style RPG, this is it, and it is huge. The map is many times larger than will, than the standard Skyrim map, so you can literally just wander forever and ever and ever and fight in tons of different dungeons and uh, and what they call arenas and portals, and these are kind of NFT enabled areas. And so uh, the crafting in this game is also very in depth. And this is where you can be a, a blacksmith or a crafter and you actually can get paid in crypto for your services. So what that means is that uh, people are, you, you essentially hold these recipes very similar to Nine Lives Arena and people will actually pay you to, to blacksmith these or craft these and they have a whole system set up to do this. And there are over 300 plus recipes for this game. So uh, it, it is a uh, you know a first person um, you know uh, RPG and uh, reminds me a lot of, like I said of, of kind of old school RPGs, uh, but this is a game that actually is looking to be coming to consoles as well. So it, it is in a beta state right now that you can play, uh, and there are lots of items you can buy and sell in the marketplace. In particular, the NFT items that allow you access to the arenas and portals, and these are things that you find throughout the the Six Dragons lands. Uh, that you can go into and there, uh, there's more rewards and challenging uh, enemies inside of these portals. So you can have a lot of fun playing those. And I, this is something I've actually played on stream a couple of times. Uh, and they're definitely making improvements on the game every dang time that I see them make an update. And like I said, the goal here is for them to actually have a game that is uh, ready for consoles. So that'll be that's a pretty interesting different uh, take here that we've seen on some of these other games. Uh, and you can see a little bit about the gameplay and stuff here. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the blockchain blacksmith service is one of the most popular things uh, because that is one of the, the best and quickest ways to be able to get gear in the game versus having to go out there and grind for it, right? So you can have someone actually just make the gear for you. So there are a lot of interesting NFT aspects of this game itself and, uh, you know, going out and, and uh, you know, killing monsters uh, for different quests is going to result in uh, in-game rewards as well. So the Six Dragons is, uh, like I said, I would say it's 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 fairly playable. Um, it's a little bit redundant in some of the things right now, but as they expand the game, I expect it to get better and better uh, and for them to add more and more quests. They already have a really good amount of different varying dungeons and uh, different uh, you know quests that you can go on, uh, but it's lacking a little bit in the story is what I would say. So it definitely needs a little bit more of the story elements. So if you're a traditional gamer and you, and you love the traditional RPGs, you'll probably love uh, the Six Dragons. Let's go take a look at the next uh, uh, game on my list here, which is actually called Myst. Now Myst is a game that uh, I have previewed uh, here on my channel uh, with a video earlier. It is a game that is not out yet. This is one of those up and coming games that you want to get in on the ground floor. It is an MMORPG, so it is a multiplayer open world game. Uh, and uh, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're questing in here, you're killing monsters, and you can actually earn mist tokens through doing so. And the mist token has actually uh, seen quite a bit of appreciation and value here recently. You can also find NFTs, right? So when you're out there, uh, you know, uh, adventuring, there are very small chances when you beat bosses that you can actually find in-game NFTs as well. Now, one of the really cool aspects about this game, besides the fact that they have different classes and the NFTs are locked to that, and so you kind of start off as this adventure class and then use NFTs to unlock uh, advanced classes like uh, you know wizards and shapeshifters and uh, and whatnot. Uh, but one of the really cool aspects is the fact that they've actually incorporated DeFi farming into the game. So your the farming in DeFi actually looks like farming. You actually have crops that are staking crops, and based upon how your staking is going of NFTs and mist in the game, your crops will grow and do better. So I thought that was a pretty interesting aspect. And so you can see the kind of the the the, the kind of uh, block style of this game. Uh, and you know that's something that I wouldn't focus too much on because I think the gameplay of it is actually going to be uh, done really well 
uh, versus the fact that it's a really well, um, you know, polished looking game. I think that, you know, gameplay is number one. And with Myst, I think that's what they're really focusing on here is they having really engaging gameplay uh, that is going to be multiplayer, right? So you're going to be playing, uh, you know, with other people in the world and that the NFTs have a really great use case and purpose in here. And that you can actually really play and earn tokens and NFTs in this game. Uh, and that is big. You know for something like this uh in general because you know it's not easy to work out an rpg that incorporates all these elements and i think mist has a really good chance of being one of those top rpg based games uh, and now is the time to get involved now is the time to do this they've only done one sale so far which is a very small sale so there's a lot of room to get here on the ground floor of this game so i hope you like that quick look at mist uh which is coming here pretty soon look for it in uh the last quarter of this year and rounding out the top five of my top five RPGs that are NFT enabled that you can play and earn in some of them now, some of them later. Uh, but this was uh, Mirandus and this is from Gala Games. Here we are at the Mirandus uh, website and uh, you know, it has, a, it has a little bit of a similar look to, um, to Mist in a lot of different ways. There's a little bit of a blocky kind of look to it. Uh, but it is more of a fantasy style uh, RPG. And the difference here uh, in conjunction to some of these other ones, and I'll show you guys a little bit of the, so you can see some of the, the look here. It has a, a little bit of a similar blocky style to it, right? But the really cool thing about this is it actually has player lands that are incorporated here too. So there's a limited 1,625 player lands. And if you own a land, uh, you'll be able to actually rent out portions of that land for people's player housing. So this, you know, uh, RPG is all about playing in a team and playing together. And then you'll even have, uh, you know, uh, uh, plots to be able to put down your own house. And if you own the land, then you, you can uh, you essentially rent that out to people who want to have your house in their in your town and, uh, and, and be able to play and, and adventure. And so you can kind of see what it looks like here. Uh, definitely a mobile focused game. Uh, something that I think is going to work really well in that kind of format. And there's also a very expansive crafting uh, system in this game too, which will incorporate a lot of NFT elements. I love that that Minotaur right there. It's so cool looking. So I think they've done a good job on, once again, uh, getting this game together. Gala Games always does a great job on execution of incorporating NFTs into their game. And this fantasy RPG is uh, definitely no uh, different. Uh, so, uh, you know, they have some pretty expansive looks here, even though everything looks like I said, it has this blocky feel to it. It still looks like it's very well polished, uh, which I really love. And so then you'll have, uh, you know, like I said, we talked about deeds and there's only a limited amount of them. And, uh, you know, you can upgrade these things and put walls and defend your home and there's monsters and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you'll be able to build buildings. And one of the things that they have, uh, one of the main NFTs that they have in this game uh, is, uh, you know, these different building NFTs. So to build some of the, these buildings that you want in your town, you, you're going to have to have an NFT for that. And so these uh, NFT sales have sold out incredibly fast. Uh, and so there, it, it's still a pretty decent chance to be able to get in on, early on this game because it has not launched yet. And uh, you should be able to, uh, you know, possibly buy some of these uh, in the next wave of sale or uh, from other players. So, uh, you know, definitely look for Mirandus. And like I said, when it comes to games, Gala Games always does a great job of incorporating these NFTs. Uh, and this RPG, I think, will be no different. Uh, if you love uh, fantasy style RPGs, uh, definitely want to check out Mirandus. And uh, I know they're going to have some really great play to earn elements in the game as well. Uh, and that Gala token has uh, also been on fire lately. So hopefully you guys like that breakdown of my top five RPG NFTs. Some are playable now. Uh, Lost Relics, Nine Lives Arena, and The Six Dragons, all playable right now. Games you can check out. Uh, the games that you can actually play and earn in and, uh, you know, get a, get a kind of, you know, ground floor look at uh, in the actual gameplay. And then uh, Mist and Mirandus are coming very soon. Uh, later this year, I believe both games are, are scheduled or slated to launch, uh, if not early 2022. Uh, but now is the time to get involved. Now is the time to jump in these communities and see what all the hype is about. So I hope you guys like this breakdown. I know it was a little bit of a longer video than normal. I want to show you guys around these, these uh, games. Uh, but that's all we have for today. Let me know what your favorite one is out of these top five. And uh, that's all we have for today, folks. Until next time, stash that crypto, friends.